feel better. <laughs> now you're better. Great. Okay. Uh, hi, everybody, and welcome to the episode 24 of Designer and Developer Having uh, Coffee. And it is our final episode of the season before we take our summer break and then we pick up back in September. Uh, my name is Tom. I'm the designer in this duo. And I look forward to talking about today uh, the topic that will be what we learn in this season. But before I do, Mario, you go first. Hello, I'm Mario. I'm the enthusiastic developer in this duo. Random fact about me, ha. Huh? Uh, I recently figured out that you can buy Colonization from Sid Meier on Steam. Just before we started this, Tom Googled it. It's actually made in 1994. If I remember correctly, it came in on like four floppy disks or maybe five, something like that. And yeah, the other day I colonized the new world with the Dutch and yay, I became the new president of Republic of Suriname and all of that. So <laughs> Okay, first, before I share my random fact, uh, I'm surprised that that game is not canceled yet because you're a evil white colonizer. Uh, but if somebody makes a mean tweet, I can expect that game being removed from Steam any day soon. You do get negative points for burning Indian villages. Though, like, you know, you get... A th if you burn, like, uh, an Aztec village, then you get minus one point for burning an Indian village, but you get 20,000 gold pieces for burning an Indian... for burning an Aztec city, which gives you 20, po 20 points. So, yeah. I, I think this is literally how it worked. They 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 waged it in gold and said so like, yeah, this gold is way more worth than a human life. So fuck them. But then a uh, human life than an Indian life. <laughs> now we're gonna get they played them. they they played civilization in real time. <laughs> <laughs> who who would have guessed? Anyway, my random fact of the day is, and I checked this yesterday, the prime meridian that goes through where I live. It's here. Like, I live on the prime meridian. This is so funny. Uh, my dad asked me, like, where is your house? And I was like, oh, if you followed the line down from Greenwich. And I went to check, actually, how far... It deviates from the actual line and will depend on the width of the line you take. But if we say that one line is, I don't know, a hairline, then it's like 15 meters away from my door. Nice. So, so, so you can it's literally cool. go across the earth. Ta -dum -tum -tush. Yes. Actually, like every day I go to the gym and back. Uh, <laughs> no, you'll have to come up with a better one. I have to do yeah. words. So okay. yeah, every time I, I, every time I go to the gym and back, I go on the opposite ends of the earth. Right, I go back. I, I, I don't think it, that's how it works. My wife's sister got married to an Australian guy, and then they went to live in Australia in Sydney. And my wife was really sad because she was leaving and everything. And I was trying to comfort her. Oh come on, it's not like in the end of the world. And in fact, it is. <laughs> it's actually the end of the world. If you are living here and you have to choose a point which is the end of the world, she was going to the end of the freaking world. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't be the end of the world if the earth was round. But since it's flat, then it is at the end of the world, right? That's because true. it's next to the wall. So there's a, like there's Australia, a couple of islands, and then there's a wall. A wall? A block of ice? What is it? I think it's a wall of ice. Uh, I, I don't know. I haven't seen Game of Thrones that far. But uh, something like that. Yeah, and then the dragons, and then there's the 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 counter Earth. It's basically the second colony. It's basically the replica of this Earth where we live parallel lives. Well, it's it's too technical, but maybe in the <laughs> next podcast, it's too sophisticated <laughs> for this audience of the podcast. So please don't. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. All right. So as you can anyway, notice, today's uh, topic is not really going to be a topic. It's just going to be us enjoying the fact that we are going on summer break. Uh, we are going to talk about. The best moments, the worst moments. We are going to talk about what we've learned and how we can make this better. Hopefully, if anybody leaves a comment or likes or subscribes or tell us tells their mother about us and suggests, and then their mother suggests improvements, we'll be happy to take a look at those. But yeah, Tom, what's the most important thing that you've learned? 
the most important thing that I've learned is that if I have an accountability partner, that being you, I'm actually going to do shit and finish shit, which is uh, very important because otherwise I would have given up uh, long ago. And to be honest, I was on a verge of just doing the table flipping and, and like not doing it a couple of times and, and having you to be responsible to actually made me plow through and i'm glad that we did that's the number one learning there are a couple of few that i'm going to share but uh what was your number one learning actually i was about to say just that and on that note i was about to apologize to everybody who's actually listening religiously to this one uh we missed an episode last week don't hurt us i had major deadlines and i really couldn't fit that one in and we didn't have anything to recycle so i apologize to our many audience for missing last week's episode but yeah like i would have also said uh hell with all of this but as we're kind of keeping each other excited and we're kind of keeping each other going and we're kind of brainstorming with each other about new ideas then it's like yeah come on let's do it so uh thank you for being there for me my dear accountability buddy no problem thank you for being there for me and uh yeah it's been i just before we started recording i looked back to everything that we recorded it's actually a long list of things especially if i look at the unedited material there's so much stuff that we actually put down and and i've actually learned to edit videos and to upload stuff and schedule stuff and and last week since we weren't recording i kind of looked into uh chopping up things into shorter post creating clips found found a couple of ai softwares that uh, i tested out tested a couple of out one with like really good results i was surprised how good it was so this is something that i plan on uh doing casually over the summer and then maybe start posting more of those on our social media since we are not recording new episodes we might keep the thing going get people interested into some other stuff and and go back to the previous episodes and check them out uh, that was the thing, and uh, yeah, it was an interesting, interesting experience, and, and I'm happy that we introduced guests. I think we're gonna do more of that in the coming season for sure. Yes. So uh, I also got some great feedback about the guests that they were interesting, which implies that we aren't. Uh, but yeah, it's it's actually great to get other people's points of view and stuff. And the fact that I really like, this is a thing that Tom and I kind of discuss how we could promote this. Well, as we are both active on LinkedIn and on some other social networks, if you see somebody talking about a topic that we discussed and then something from our episode kind of uh, fits in, just put, yeah, Tom and I discussed this here. And so I'm going to scrolling through LinkedIn and, you know, reading about people's stuff. And there's actually a lot of places where we can say, yeah, this is kind of a topic that we discuss. Check our points of view here. Which means that either, A, over the course of our 20 years in the industry, we have learned to understand what's kind of important and what to think about. Or, B, we just talk a, a lot about <laughs> into the empty so something makes sense. I'm kind of hoping towards A, but I'm not going to you know, say that it is. I think it's former. I would definitely see it's the former. Uh, and I was surprised every once in a while when you and I have a conversation or when I find myself in a conversation with people about the technology, like, oh, we actually covered this. And, and it's like, we actually do know shit, which is kind of, it, it's surprising because you don't think about it daily, right? It's kind of, embedded in your in your subconscious and you use the information that you know but you never access the information in order to recite it and repeat it and say it out loud and then when you start actually digging it's like oh i have this in my inventory and i have this and this and actually i know a lot of these things and yesterday i had a conversation uh with a recruiter for a one of the companies and she asked me what is my leadership style that was a question that I didn't anticipate. And then I started talking about how I work with people, how how I build a team, what is the important for me to be and have in the team and so on. And then I went on like a monologue of like five minutes. 
And at, at one point I was, I lost myself. Like, did I ever, did I even answer the question? I was like, did I, this, this, and she's like, yeah, this is all great. She was just writing down stuff. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it, it's interesting because I never thought of myself as like, I'm coming into this to be a leader or whatever. It's not, it's not a mindset that I have. Like I just do things and work with people. I, uh, and, and then when I had to put in words, there were actually some things that even made sense to me. I thought I need to write this down. I need to write something about this. <laughs> this actually, this, is, this could actually be useful. And one of the things, and uh, I know this worked with my previous team, last year one of the things that i enjoyed doing when because it was in london it's at the moment like on every a lot of companies scale to like one to two days a week in the office uh usually one but some do two uh second day is like non-mandatory and stuff like that like a lot of companies are like downsizing their offices they don't need as much whatever whatever so when i would actually come to the office what I would do, because I come from Croatian coffee culture, I would grab my team and take them out for coffee. So there was a nice cafe down the street. I was like, let's go out. And they're like, but we have coffee in the office. Like, no, 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 you don't get it. <laughs> we have to sit down for a coffee outside of the place we work while we're getting paid for this time because this is going to be a productive meeting. And as your line manager and your person that leads this thing, whatever, whatever. Uh, but the whole thing was, let's get out in an environment that is not office, where I think people feel more open, more kind of able to express themselves freely. And I always cultivate a no judgment, like judgment free zone with or with my friends or people I work with. Like, I am not judging anybody for anything. If you want to stand on your head and type with your left foot, like, I don't care as long as you do your job, right? So so this is one of the important things. And and I, I'm going to dig into th- that a little bit deeper just to see like, what was actually, how does that fit into a leadership style? Coffee leadership, I think. That, coffee leadership, I need to write that out. Yeah, it would be impolite to come to a meeting and call it beer leadership because sometimes, you know... Uh, Corporations have issues with that. I was a part of a big network community, and then they told us, yeah, those networking events are great, and those photos are great, but please, can you give us photos without any alcohol being there? No. And my question was, we can, of course, but they're going to be fake because we are drinking beer, because we are, uh, I don't know, between ages of 30 and 45, And we are drinking beer. We are doing worse. We are drinking whiskey. We are drinking rakia. We are drinking all that stuff. Why? Because this is like community hour where you hang out with people. And this is what we do while we hang out. And I don't see a reason why that's not something that you want to show. But okay, that was the policy. So we didn't do it. But still, like, I mean, uh, how to be a leader, I think, or like, what would be my leadership style? My leadership style is that anybody can come up to me in my team and say, go fuck yourself. But they need to be able to say, I think this and this because of this and this. And while that culture is there, I think that the openness and the fact that even though I'm technically in charge of my company, anybody can tell me, hey, you're wrong. Don't do it like that. I think that that makes everybody pretty happy, hopefully. Or at least they tell me they're happy yeah. because they're scared because I'm too big and scary and hairy. <laughs> yeah, there's a to point of your uh, hiding the beer thing. So I really hate it when corporations pretend they are not human. That just doesn't sit well with me at all. And who is the person looking at the photos of people having a uh, community hour or however you're going to call it and thinking, oh, they do not drink alcohol. This is the team I want to work with. I, I, I stopped drinking. I don't drink anymore, but I couldn't care less, right? And, and uh, it's just being fake is, I think, something that comes down from A, poor leadership and B, people thinking what other people want without asking them. And like, if you have a personal problem, just don't be in the photo. But if you're a type of an asshole that thinks that hundred people should not be themselves because you think it presents poorly, then you're hiring 
strategy was poor because you obviously hire those people, right? <laughs> so you hire the drinkers. So so maybe put on your job at like we we need people who go to regular AA meetings who do not drink, who do not take drugs, uh, dress properly, uh, don't have band T-shirts on in work, like all that bullshit. I don't know. It's just uh, the older I get. I realized I'm going on more and more into a war with these corporate stooges and stu- suits and, 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 and cretins in business. The, this is what, how I see them. The older I get, the more I expose I am to these people. These people are, are fucking waste of space. And uh, there are so many young, brilliant people making stuff and revolutionizing how companies work. And I can't wait for these old school way of thinking people go away. It's going to be glorious. But this is, this is luckily because we are in the tech industry and especially, so we were working remotely, like, I don't know, I'm working remotely from 213. I know you are as well, but like the couple of years of COVID kind of switched everything remotely. And now it's normal. The suit and tie in the tech industry are just gone. You are sitting in your office doing Zoom meetings, doing the stuff remotely in your T-shirt, in your, you know, okay, you have to look polite, you have to look clean, but you don't have to have a Armani suit to impress your counterparty. Thank God that we are now uh, putting more emphasis on what you know and what you can do as opposed to how beautiful you can look like. That's uh, very nice. And the fact that is most ridiculous is you and I both love and follow uh, Alex Hormozzi. And he has some great advice. But I mean, look at that guy. <laughs> Seriously, look at him. He's like in an undershirt, in a, in a flannel uh, shirt, short trousers, socks, and then slippers like Crocs. Yeah. Anti everything. But he's kind of done all right for himself. So uh, apparently you can do it and you don't have to look like a, a pretty boy. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And uh, I, I know when we were when we moved to London, my wife was concerned that uh, she's going to have problems finding a job because she has tattoos, and she's always like, "Oh, how people are going to perceive that?" And uh, it turns out nobody cares. Nobody actually cares. Just please save my animal. <laughs> I don't care if you. Right, and her tattoos are animals and plants and whatever, right? So, and like she has a cat and a dog on her on her on her arms, and and it was like people actually don't care, and people who do care actually do not matter. That's the that's the beauty of it. people don't matter, and nobody matters. Like nobody who has an opinion of you doesn't matter. Welcome to the Zen episode of the developer and designer having coffee. We're going to be spilling out wisdom and you can sit here and just uh, scoop it up and become wise after this one. Oh, young one. Maybe we should do a special called... Sorry, I interrupted you. No, no, no. no. (laughs) I wasn't saying anything smart, so (laughs) please interrupt me. I wanted to say maybe we should do an episode called uh, Designer and Developer Having Drugs. (laughs) 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 Just do one high... And see how that goes. Like, like we can, we can. I'll, I'll email you some gummies. And, and <laughs> Designer, developers, <laughs> and the dragons in the kitchen having coffee. <laughs> yeah, something like that. That would be great. But yeah, coming back to what we learned from the episodes is, uh, I didn't thought that we were going to last that long. Like I said, but it makes me feel kind of this weird sense of pride when I look at like. This is going to be episode 24. So so this is like the how many episodes friends have per season, right? It's like, it's a lot. Uh, and I'm not saying that we put in effort as... Uh, of course we do. As the, the production of a sitcom. But but it's, it's something to look at and think like, how cool we did this. And it lives now online and it might help people. And uh, it makes me feel great, actually. On the other hand, in 20 years, when we look back at it, we're going to be, what the fuck were we thinking? That's fine. Yeah. I've learned that uh, I don't need to look at myself through the lens of what I know today uh, in, in my history and, and thought poorly of myself. Uh, and I know that that's a trend going on in the, in the, in the 
online uh, culture today where they are like they want to cancel John Wayne for being racist or whatever. Like you can't look at something from hundred years ago and do that. So this is the same thing, same principle I apply to myself. Like I don't know everything that I did. What, what do you don't know? I mean, you should ask Warner Brothers. They canceled Pepe Le Pew because he's a female molester. I really don't want to go into that topic on this podcast. But uh, <laughs> if we if we have another podcast uh, that that's going to be straight white male talking facts, then, of course, we can talk about that. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> the, the, the principle that I've dropped uh i would say is when i look at my work from whenever until like six months ago everything is shit especially more than a year ago and let alone five or 10 or 15 and this is and if you're if you're proud of the shit that you've done five years ago and you think it still holds water then you haven't progressed much because it means that you stayed on the same level. And if you don't see how that can be improved with, with five-year uh, difference, then, then there's a problem with you. And I did the same thing with when I was doing stand-up. Uh, I would perform and I would record every episode and that I would be performing live. And then I would listen to them just to improve on the next one. And I thought like, man, this one killed. This was such a good performance. And then... Three months later, down the line, we were performing in a theater somewhere outside of Zagreb. And then we were performing that show. So I was just listening. I know that this episode killed them at a little note. I would listen to it like with three months delay. And I said, like, oh, this is horrible. In three months, so much progress. Like, this is horrible. And then that performance of the same thing would be 10 times better. So it was kind of. No, no, I agree never to, to, I was actually kidding, I agree never to reflect on what you've done or like reflect it. If it works and if it solved the problem that you wanted to solve, it's good. You did it to the best of your abilities then. If you had to redo it now, you would probably do it like 10% better. And that's something uh, that happens often like in software development projects. When you get to about two thirds or three quarters of a way there, you know how it should have been done. And you know, if you were to rewrite it now, you would have done it properly. The thing about that is don't dwell about it first. Second, finish it and the learnings that you've got there, don't apply them to that project, apply them to the next project. And number three, this doesn't happen because, this doesn't happen only because you are, uh, I'm going to say incompetent, but not in a bad way, but because you didn't know better. This happens because the requirements aren't coming in like that. So the requirements, you will get two thirds of the way there. And then the client is going to tell you, yeah, but you know, the thing that we're doing here, that entity can also connect here and then they can influence this process. So that, well, you kind of could have told me that two months ago, we would have done it better. So this is unavoidable. Software development is a living thing, as much as, as weird as it sounds, and things are going to change. And your job is to, my advice is always to try to build it as flexible as possible so that you can adapt to change without much issues, but you will have change and you will have to adapt to change and you will have issues. This is unavoidable, or if it is avoidable, then somebody please teach me how because I haven't learned in 20 years. By the way, please say hi to the guy who is deciding to ride a bike under my window and really test his new outlet because it's like really... <laughs> so if you're having any noise from my end, I apologize for that. So uh, actually there's no noise because noise cancellation is on, but there's like an every once in a while there's a pop uh that's audible but i will try to fix that in post pop so, like pop or pop like something yeah no it's it's like like somebody's doing scratching on the microphone it's it kind of yeah. i'm gonna be a dj you're bum, 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 ba -ba -bum, ba -ba -bum, bum. i'm gonna cut this part out <laughs> <No>! <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I won't. I'll uh, I'll see how it Why? Goes. This is a loose episode. Uh, we don't really have a topic. We're just talking about stuff we learn. Another thing I've learned, by the way, is that if you and I decide, okay, this is going to be a topic, let's think about it a little bit ahead. 
And a little bit can be like, you know, it doesn't have to be days, it can be hours. But then I actually think about it and I come prepared with something and I sound like I'm knowledgeable. If we uh, we have had a few episodes where we would just, you know, say, okay, we're recording tomorrow. And then when we meet for recording, decide on a topic. I found that uh, in those um, types of uh, episodes, I kind of uh, think of my feet and I, uh, I sound a little bit slow. So, yeah, that's something that we should try to avoid in the future. Also, if anybody's making their own podcast, please try to avoid this in the future. People are going to look at our episodes and think like, oh, Mario thinks a lot on his feet. <laughs> <laughs> and not really quickly. <laughs> Mario thinks slowly. Uh, thinking fast and slow. Yeah, yeah. I'm calling yeah. it thorough. That's a great book, actually. That's a, that's a good book, Thinking Fast and That slow. is a good book. Um, on a uh, big recommendation, I can't remember the author because I can never remember the author, but Thinking Fast and Slow... Great book, good read to have. The author is Daniel Kahneman. Kahneman. Fuck. Kahneman. Kahneman. Yeah, Daniel Kahneman. 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 Depends if you're American, then it's Kahneman. It's Kahneman. I'm, I'm, yeah, anyway. Kahneman? Cool. That guy. Kahn, Kahn? No. I'm full of these okay. jokes. I'm just... Kahn. So good today. <laughs> Yes, no, uh, okay, yeah. I understand. I'm very sure that this episode is going to have a lot of drop-off like in the middle where people are like, okay, this is not useful at all. <laughs> or or some people might say like, okay, these are the two assholes that I could have a coffee with. And then if you're thinking that and you want to be a guest on our show and you're in tech, then you drop us a message and uh, add us on LinkedIn and we'll definitely consider it uh for sure or if you want to have coffee with us and you're in either parts of the world where we are uh, uh living let us know and then when we get together we can get you for a coffee that's also possible or yes, we that. might be those evil guys that get you for a beer but we shouldn't say or show that on television we are not on television yet <laughs> yet <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we have, as you can see, we, we have should... high ambitions. What we could do, uh, uh, I did some work for a company that did streaming and like over, uh, it's called Over the Top, I think, OTT, Over over the Top Television, something like that. Uh, basically, TV channels. Uh, we could do that fairly easily. We could create our own streaming channel and just put all, all of our 24 episodes on repeat. <laughs> And then we can have a design developer having coffee channel. And it's just like running, right? Uh, but there's no skipping forward. It's not like on YouTube. It's just like it's it's there. Uh -huh, you have it to listen runs. to it. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, you have to. Like, oh, it's an episode seven. I know that episode 12 is amazing. And you have to wait for like five hours. <laughs> but is there like a way to track, you know, how much people are listening? So like if you get to, I don't know, Three hours, we send you a big diploma, like the masochist of the season or something like that. Yeah, yeah. it's like the similar thing that Netflix does when they ask you, are you still watching? <laughs> and then you realize that you are a, just a couch slob and an asshole. And like, yes, I'm having my second pizza and I'm still watching Friends. So, yes, please continue. But I'm going to get up just one more episode. <laughs> One more episode, yeah. But I, then I don't know, we, were they on a break or not? So I have to, you know, continue watching uh, <laughs> to see how it resolves. Uh, but but yeah, we can totally do that. We should totally do a diplomas for everybody who watched our stuff. Like you graduated from the school of, uh, I wanted to say hard knocks. <laughs> yeah, this is, you, like, if you listen to all the 24 episodes, you can apply for a junior role, I would say. <laughs> no, but that's actually... So not if you listen to all 24 episodes, but if you actually apply some of the things that we've said, I think you can apply for not only a junior role. And this is something that I do often on the shows and often in real life, and Tom actually uh, uh, told me off about it. I make fun of how useless stuff I can do and stuff I know is. Because I know that there are people who do everything I do out there that do it better. 
but actually it turns out that I do do some things quite well and I do know some things that are quite smart. And when I share some of my knowledge, it is valuable to somebody at least. So uh, um, I think that if you have listened to us rampaging on about all the different topics in the tech industry, you could have walked away with some useless information. You could have walked away with some general information. You could have walked away with some information that you already knew about. But I'm pretty sure that you could have walked away with some tips and tricks that you haven't heard yet. So uh, I am actually kind of proud of that. You should be. And that's good. And I know that we are calling this a podcast, but I think it's more of a, this is Tom and Mario having therapy. (laughs) We can rename it. Like season two is becoming, (laughs) instead of coffee, it's becoming therapy. Designer and developer having therapy. (laughs) Podcast. uh, That would be, I think, more apt actually for for the show. No, but this is like, this is how we started. So we started the whole thing. Tom and I used to meet like once a month or something and then just discuss what's happening in your lives. What did you read? What problems are you having and how you're dealing with them uh, uh, and things like that. And the things that would pop up are actually stuff that we talked about in episodes. We've talked about, oh my God, I have a problem at work because I'm in a team that doesn't communicate. Okay, what's the topic for a show? Communication in remote teams. Oh my God, I have a client that has all these red flags and now I'm looking at how to address them. What's the topic for a show? Which clients are good and which clients are bad to work for you? Uh, uh, Oh my God, I read this amazing book. It changed my view on this. What's the topic? Topic is book recommendations. So we are actually kind of, you know, uh, um, talking about the things that we do not necessarily in the same way, uh, with a lot, lot less swear words. But yeah, I mean, this is kind of what we're doing, and this is therapy, self improvement sessions. If you don't want to add a stigma to it or something like that, I'm fine calling it therapy. Therapy is great. I went to therapy. Therapy is amazing. Yeah, uh, I especially like "Welcome to the Church of Noise." If anybody gets that joke, there's a German metal band called Therapy. And that was an amazing uh, joke. One more. Thank you. Thank you. I want to roll. Uh, I didn't get that. Yeah, nobody I, got that I, because I, like therapy has 20 people knowing about it. But that's... It's like uh, that creation band when kids fall asleep. It has like... <laughs> Something like that. By the way, you might like uh, therapy. Google, uh, once we're done with this, Google therapy with a question mark in the end. They're actually a good metal band. You might like it. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll definitely take a look. Uh, so I might like therapy as much as I like therapy. Something like that. Uh, yeah, that was a good... I, I, I wanted to say that therapy was a really good investment. It was not a waste of money. And I was so fucking skeptical for years. For years. Uh, and it robbed me of going sooner and doing some of the things sooner. Uh, and I would recommend to everybody, and I know this is not a uh, suicide prevention hotline or self-awareness or uh, mental health awareness month or whatever, but it's really, 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 really useful. Uh, And it's not that expensive, depending on where you are and how you look at it, but I know there is even a uh, health insurance covered therapy as well. Uh, that you can you can look for, and it doesn't matter uh, who it is. You get a person who's trained to talk to you. And so it helps. there's a lot of stigma about therapy. Like if you're going to see a therapist, that means that you're insane. And uh, this is something that all therapists are kind of trying to break, but they are having troubles with it because basically for the last 50 years, you were taught that if you're going to see a therapist, that means that you're insane. And then a friend of mine said she was going to seek her therapist. And I was like, okay, is there anything wrong with you? Is there anything I can help with? And I didn't mean it in a bad way. I actually wanted to help. She was like, nope. Well, if there's nothing wrong, why are you going to see a therapist? And then she said a word that I'm, that kind of broke my prejudice on the fact that the only crazy people go to see a therapist was, well, it's like mental hygiene. You know, like you go to practice three times a week to keep your body fit. Well, you go to a therapist once a week, once every two weeks to keep your mind clean, clear, clear clear-ish, whatever. 
And that yeah. really mm -hmm. resonated me. So the, the, the concept of mental hygiene is something that broke my, my prejudice. For me, it's more like uh, you take your car to a mechanic. You do the same thing with your brain. It's the same thing. Somebody needs to take a look under the hood and change the oil if needed, or just say, no, it's all good. Uh, but by the way, it's never all good. It's, it's always there's, your always, <laughs> it's a, there's always a lamp on for something. There's always a little light, <laughs> and then a little warning light for something. And, and it's great. And uh, it's not your mother. It's you. It's just you. You can't blame. You can't blame anybody. Because if you blame your mother, you can then go a level deeper and blame your grandmother because she fucked up your mother. And then you can blame your great grandmother because she dropped your grandmother. Uh, and if you go all the way back, you will get to the Big Bang. And to the amoeba. To be. That bitch yeah. amoeba. <laughs> The exactly. fucking so, bitch amoeba. It split into two weird ways. It should have split like on the side and not horizontal. Exactly. And then actually, it's all you, baby. It's all you. It starts and stops with you. And when you're ready to take responsibility that it's not someone else to blame and you stop being a victim of, oh, poor me, my mom fucked me up or whatever, my dad or whoever, then you're actually get. A chance to be better. You mean it's not anyway. the government, it's not Serbia, it's not uh, the, the Masons, it's not the lizard people, no? No, nah, no, it's all you, baby. All you. It starts and stops with you. I'm sorry. Do I have to pay like anyway. 50 euro for this one now? <laughs> uh, you know, but for everybody else, I have a donation button on my profile. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I just summarize the entire years of therapy into one sentence, which basically can be done. Uh, you don't have to go to therapy for years, but people kind of think it has to be long and hard process. It's also one of the biases that we have. If it's not hard, then it's not worth it, right? We kind of don't value things that get easy, that, that are easy to do. So... Uh, so making sure that you are responsible for everything in your life is not easy no 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 that's it's simple but uh it's easy to be aware of that it just that's easy that's the easy part that really the awareness part. is the easy part the, yeah, the fact to do anything about it and to apply it in your everyday work is that's work that's work that's work but uh but yeah uh i i think i'm i'm, I'm happy with wrapping up this episode here yes uh -huh. as we said we we really kept on topic and we really discussed yeah, we were. I think we were on point so much that we we can wrap it up now. Uh, you prepared the joke for the end. I did. It's the difference Go. between British English and American English. So in in the UK, people use a lift. In America, people use an elevator. This is because they were raised differently. Jesus Christ! <laughs> you didn't expect that. No, I didn't. <laughs> That's horrible. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna end up this season with another Chuck Norris joke, uh, because I don't know. I, I started to they they are growing on me again. Uh, uh, so when Chuck Norris is doing push-ups, he's not pushing himself off the ground. He's pushing Earth away from himself. I love that one. He's so strong. Love me a long time. How does Chuck Norris uh, do shots of water? Directly from oh. the tap. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes. Horrible. Anyway, <laughs> thank thank you everybody for listening. This for one staying with us for the entire season. Yeah. This was this was a uh, uh, this was a, a cool little journey with it. If you were able to put up with us. For all of the 24 episodes, then you're a masochist and we will give you a diploma uh, next year or next season, starting sometime after the summer break. Well, we have some new ideas. We might do some new concepts. Uh, eh, we'll keep you in touch or we won't. <laughs> yeah, we will. Yeah, we will. Uh, yeah. September, we're going to restart. Yes. Sure. 
So, so yes. Thank you again, everybody, for listening, for tuning in. Thank you, Mario, for this uh, fantastic experience. It was a, uh, it was great. I learned a lot. Thank you, Tom, so for helping me become an internet star and not <laughs> no, having me pleasure. do porn. Well, uh, we'll do porn yeah. next season, maybe. <laughs> only facts. We'll do only facts. <laughs> All right. Cool. Enjoy, everybody. Have a great time. See you, Mario. Bye. Bye, bye.